There's a thrill of anticipation at this jade dealer's shop in downtown Hong Kong. A new lot of stone has just arrived from Burma. Stone that looks like any other from the outside, but can have lustrous jade inside, so precious that customers will take great financial risks to own it. This piece will be sold within minutes for more than a hundred thousand US dollars. What makes this stone so desirable are the tiny green dots in it, and this one appears to contain a lot of them. But to understand the real value of jade, one has to know the hardships, the adventure, and the risks that people have taken along its incredible journey from the mining quarries of northern Burma to this ordinary shop in Hong Kong. It's amazing to know that the love affair of the Chinese with jade has a history of over 5,000 years. In fact, there's no comparison in the entire history of mankind where a people have been so passionate about a stone. To the Chinese, jade was not just a stone. It was the link between heaven and earth almost like a telephone for emperors to talk to the gods. Nephrite was incredibly hard, harder than steel. It was defined by its virtues, its toughness, shininess and translucency. Confucius saw in it the value of knowledge. But then, about 700 years ago, came a totally new material to the Emperor's court of the Middle Kingdom. Jadeite from Burma. It immediately sent the rulers into delight. It was not only harder than nephrite, but was available in an entire range of shimmering colours. They called it jade, disregarding the fact that it was an entirely different mineral than nephrite. Where the colour appeared to be translucent green, Jadeite was called Imperial Jade. It was the Stone of Heaven. To the rest of the world, the difference between these two stones still remains a source of confusion but not to the Chinese or to these people here in northern Burma, the only place on earth where imperial jade can be found. This is the stone around which China built its culture. That's never happened before with any other gemstone or with any other culture. They revered it. They actually revered the stone. We, we have no history. We don't even revere gold or silver or diamonds or anything like that. But the Chinese did. And that love for it has gone through 5,000 years of history. According to a local tale, about 700 years ago, there was a Yunnan trader traveling in what is now northern Burma. He had bought some goods along his way, and to balance the load on his mule, he had picked up a boulder. When he threw away the ballast, he realized the brown stone was in fact of bright green color inside. The trader had found the stone of heaven. But the Chinese didn't know the origin of the jadeite since the trader had forgotten where exactly the stone had come from. In the 13th and 14th centuries, the government of Yunnan sent expeditions to the rugged mountains in northern Burma. But most members perished. They were either killed by hostile hill tribes or by malaria. 
Until today, their graves in the old city of Amarapura bear witness to this tragedy. The origin of the imperial jade was to be a mystery for 500 years. It is here, in Mandalay, the capital of ancient Burma, where the journey to the still secretive mines begins. It leads to places sought by treasure hunters for centuries, and where no outsider has been since the Burmese military took power in 1962. For over four decades, this part of Burma was also the scene of a civil war between the government troops and the Kachin ethnic minority. Only a recent peace agreement between the central government and the Kachin people makes travel to this area possible. The train from Mandalay to Michina runs through a region somewhere between northern India and southern China. The deposits of jadeite found here were formed 20 million years ago. This is one of the most inaccessible parts of Burma, with no proper roads, no security, poor facilities. This 800 square mile area is the only place in the world where the so-called imperial jade can be found. The train arrives at a place the Burmese call Choksengmo, which in literal translation means jade land. No one knows how much jade is hidden in these mountains because there was never enough money or opportunity to do a thorough survey. The local Kachin people just dug one mountain at a time and in some of them found jade of the finest quality. Unlike the Buddhist majority in Burma, most of the Kachin are Christians. This cross, made entirely of jade, symbolizes their long quest for independence from the Burmese. For over four decades, the Kachin have fought for their own independent state and used these mines to finance their war. But the money couldn't help them get even basic equipment to these mines because the government cut off all their transport routes. There are no jackhammers, no water pumps, no conveyor belts. Even after the ceasefire, the Burmese army did not help in bringing in heavy machinery to these mines. All these bizarre structures were carved out of the mountains entirely by hand. Nobody is sure how long the peace will last anyway because the people have never given up their dream of an independent homeland. The Kachin want to defend their own culture, which is believed to be older than the Burmese. The Uru River flows right through the center of Jade Land. The biggest mines are enclosed to the east and west, and the river itself is a source of the stone of heaven. Travelling down by boat, we find these underwater mines where some of the finest quality jade is found. The technology used is hardly space age. Miners work in tandem to ensure each other's safety. One stays on land using a crude air pump, which is made of bicycle pumps strapped together. The partner on the other end of the hose is locating boulders underwater. Underwater mining is one of the oldest recorded methods of recovery.